Hello, everybody. This is Thomas Slesh with Bonfire Audio with another quick tip inside of Adobe Audition 2017. Today, it's about side chain compression. So I've got two tracks here. One is some voiceover that I previously recorded. It's a very cheesy voiceover. It's not fantastic, but it serves our purpose today. And I've got a pretty epic music bed. So you can take a listen to each of those as they are, as I brought them in. Obviously, nothing's been applied yet in the way of side chaining. There is a place where time stands still, and history has not yet begun. Okay, so you can hear that the music is uh, overbearing when the vocals come in. You can't really hear the voiceover very well at all. And, uh, and so the point of side chaining is basically to save you a ton of time so you don't have to make a gazillion cuts or do enveloping and bring these levels down every time words are spoken because in a really long project that would take forever and uh, is, is uh, not as convenient to undo. So side chain compression. So you're going to go ahead and first of all, we need to pl apply the compressor to the music track. And inside of Adobe Audition, the compressor is the dynamics processor that allows side chaining. So you're going to go to um, here in your multi-track editor. The fastest way to access effects is up here. You can also do it through your effects panel uh, dialog box as well. You see here, if you hit effects, it's showing you everything that's going on. I've got a little bit of tube model compressor on this music track to just control some of the dynamics before I go ahead and apply any other side chaining. So here we go. You're going to choose Amplitude and Compression, and you're going to go down to um, Dynamic Processing. So at this point, we've got the compression on the track, but now we need to tell it that this is going to be only activated when something is being inputted into the compressor. So this here at the top right is our sidechain input symbol. You're going to select that, and now it is ready to receive a signal. Now we have to go to that signal that we want to uh, feed into that compressor. So we're going to come over to the voiceover track and we're going to send it to that compressor. In order, to, in order to do that, we need to go up here and enable the sends dialog boxes in multi-track uh, multi mode. So now you can see that there is no send. So we want to select that and go to sidechain and choose dynamic processing. Now, had you not already applied the compressor to the music track that allows side shading and enabled that, that would not have been an option. It would have just said add bus. But we can, and we've enabled that. This here is the level, the amount of signal you're pushing into the side chain. I usually leave it at zero. It goes down below, and it goes above up to 15 dB. I usually leave it at zero and set my parameters within the side chain. And that way, that's kind of always a sort of safe zone and unity. And I don't have to worry about uh, any specific settings on that later. So let's just take a listen. Well, first of all, sorry. We've got to actually tell uh, the compressor here, the dynamic processing compression, how much to reduce. So how much compression to apply when a signal is fed into it. So we're going to go ahead and grab this, bring it down to about negative 20, negative 25. However you see fit, again, you're going to just kind of play it back and forth and uh, and see what settings you like. You can also use the presets. These aren't specific to sidechain compression, so I would choose a soft limit of negative 12, negative 24, and fine-tune from there. Just realize that inside the settings, uh, things are you know may not be exactly what you need. We don't want our signal boosted beyond where we have it already. If you do, you can do that with this output gain. But I liked where it was. So I want it to stay at zero. I don't want to add or reduce anything there. Okay, so let's just take a listen to what's going on now inside, uh, excuse me, with this, with these particular settings. There is a place where time stands still. And history? So you can tell right away that it is actually activating the compressor and when the uh, dialogue is spoken, that indeed the music is ducked down and reduced and being compressed, and that's fantastic. So I'll go ahead and mute this since you can hear that further, just as it's happening on the music track with this dialogue uh, muted. So awesome, huh? 
However, you can hear it wanted, the music wanted to go down and then back up before I finished my second word. That's a little too quick. So where that comes in, what you want to do is you're going to deal with your release time inside of your compression settings. You want that release time to be where you don't have a pumping, any sort of jarring music sound trying to fight with that dialogue. So you're just going to need to fine tune that um, and see what is to your liking. So let's listen back again. I tried to come up a little bit right here. So I can even go with a further release time. And it was very subtle. I did try to do it again, but it, it's not too bad. So you can continue to fine tune that if you'd like. So here's what we got. There is a place where time stands still. And history has not yet begun. A place of breath. So I really like that. And what I love about this plugin here with, that Adobe Audition has is this band limiting. So now I can actually, because right, the way it is set now, all the frequencies are being compressed when an input signal is applied. I can tell it to do a low cutoff at 100. So what I'm basically doing, or what I'm really allowing here now is the more frequency uh, on the low end to stay in, which is nice because anything below 100 generally is not uh, conflicting with the spoken word necessarily. So I can leave in a little bit more of that warmth and keep some of the dynamics there uh, while the rest of it is being compressed. There is a place where time stands still and history has not yet begun. Let's check some of my stuff further up here. The place is here and the adventure begins now. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. Again, I'm Thomas with Bonfire Audio. If you have any questions related to your project or how to do any of this, certainly leave it in the comments and I'll get back to you right away. But until we meet again, have a great day and be blessed.